so I was chatting to a guy the other day. I think I was doing a little live stream thing. So I haven't done more than him. Um, just don't ask. Um, he was talking about when you have got like a Maya particle system and you want to use instance geometry, um, how the particles, when they kind of like collide or interact with a surface, like a floor, um, they won't uh, pick up the shape of the instance geometry. Yeah. So all they're doing is just looking at either um, like the spherical size of the particle or the particle size itself as in a point in space um, so it's never going to work like that so I mentioned the way around it is to use mesh so I'll just quickly show you what I mean right so I've got a shape here I suppose that like represents I don't know a wrench or a spanner or something like that um, dead in the centre of world space we'll just delete all the history and whatever um, and I'm just going to create a mesh network so let's just get up to that tab and kabam so we've got a bunch of spanners, wrenches, whatever you want to call them. Um, I'm just going to pull these down to zero at this point here. Um, and I'm going to try and treat this number of points as an emitter. Yeah. So the more increments we go up here, um, we just work that out over time. So I'm just going to go to like, I'm going to set a key here at zero. And I'm going to go to frame 100. And I'm going to set a key there at say, I don't know, let's just go... 25 for now and I'm going to set a key there so when I rewind and play we're getting these turn up like so so I'm just going to pull back that distance so we've got a spanner showing up you won't see the others because they're all inside each other there okay next step um, let's just hide the grid I'm going to go to mash and I'm going to go to mash dynamics and add a mash dynamics node so if I play it now, you're going to see a kind of emitter function because the gravity is going to keep pulling down uh, every new asset that's created. So we go one, two, three, four, five. And there we go. We've got a whole bunch of elements falling and they're being emitted by our funky little emitter that we've got going on there. So this is set to, so we're looking at dynamics, it's set to automatic. You can change it to convex hole. Um, I'll just show you what I mean. So if we just click on the bullet solver um, and we go down and uh, in the bullet solver, we scroll down to the debugging section and we're just going to click on collision shapes. So what that's doing at the moment is it's actually using this mesh for the shape and it's probably not the fastest way of doing it if you want to use uh, say like a whole bunch of these you know like a thousand or something like that um, so we might go back to the dynamics tab change this to like convex hole and we're going to have to rewind and play to see that change but if I rewind and kind of stop it there you can see what's happening so it's basically creating a hole you know like a templated shape around our shape so it's not really helping us out of this space in here um, but it kind of depends on what look you're trying to get so if I turn off that uh, if I go back into the bullet solver and turn off the collision shapes and then rewind and play it we'll just see if there's like much of a difference between using the entire sphere and it really isn't at this point so it's going to come down to the sort of shape that you're using as to whether that's going to work or not for you um, obviously we can add some friction so they don't all go flying off um, let's just try that see if we get something that looks a bit more weighty when they land there we go and they're all landed on top of each other and that's like a really fast dynamic sim using a complicated ish um, model so and of course if we want to emit more we're just going to go back into our distribute and we're going to if I hit select there, I'll be able to see my key keyframe down here. Um, but a quicker way of doing this is perhaps just to go into the animation editor and the graph editor. Pull that over there and we can see our Bezier curve. I'm just going to change that to linear. Um, and yeah, we can see that that's set at an amount. So if I drag this up here, pull that up there, we can see this number up here changing. See it was at 25. 
and we're just going to take that up just keep going up to around 100 that sort of that sort of way and then obviously we're going to get a hundred of these landing now I'm just going to double check that I've got this back on convex hull rewind and play and we've got a whole bunch more of them and it's all happening over a hundred frames so we get frame 100 and they'll stop and that's quite a lot of spanners or wrenches depending on where you're from and the result here is that we're dealing with mash yeah so if you don't like the distribution of it we can go and start tweaking that either in the dynamic side of things where we could add a constraint with a bit of a motor on it to sort of push them apart initially um, uh, we can use the positional strength to try and keep them inside like a, a structure or we can actually go back into mash itself and add like a random node and we get some different sizes going on something like that we've got some different size spanners happening now we've got some small ones and some big ones um, without too much hassle uh, we can also can you rotate them? I don't know if rotation works when we're doing dynamics but if I play that now you can see that we've got different size spanners coming out and it's computing them as well which is well handy you know what I mean um, so that's spanners obviously it's going to work on anything um, you know any kind of option you can think of and so for now I'm just going to go back into the graph editor uh, yeah, come on graph editor I'm going to pull this number down a bit again just so I'm not killing Maya for now because you know Maya doesn't like doing anything um, and I'm going to play around with moving that emitter around yeah so I'm going to transform node um, and I'm going to connect a null to that so I've got a null sitting here so let's say you had your emitter on a path let's just do it um, curve tools let's just create quick curve I've dragged that over there I'm going to select that null and I'm going to select that curve um, and I'm going to go into uh, animation menu I always forget where this is so I think it's in constraint now is it motion paths yeah there we go attach the motion path and I'm just going to do that over um, start and end let's just go 100 it's going to be pretty slow but whatever um, hit apply close that so now we've got the null which is controlling the transform of the distribution yeah so basically it's now uh, going to act like an emitter what it should do let's hit play and see there we go so now you've got emission happening like you would with a particle emitter and uh, we've got this curve that we can just tweak around and, and play around with so again you know simple example here but it just shows you how you know powerful mesh can be and how simple it is to use versus like in dynamics or something all right so enjoy that and i will speak to you soon